Hey, this is Victor Agreta, and this week on Coders, we're going to be talking to Alex Lavage of Gig Tank. So join us right after this break. Nexius, accelerating network and business transformation. Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.com. Hey, everybody. It's Victor Agreta again here on Coders, and welcome to the show. I am here with Alex Lavage, who is in Chattanooga, Tennessee. How are you doing, Alex? Hey, Victor. How's it going? Pretty good, man. Um, so let me ask you, first of all, you, you know, you've been very active in entrepreneur efforts for a long time. And I know we met a long time ago getting co-working going and, and some other things. So your newest thing, your newest gig, I should say, is actually this thing called Gig Tank. So tell us a little bit about what Gig Tank is and why it's in Chattanooga. Sure. So Gig Tank uh, was initially uh, started in 2010. It was uh, started off by Lampost Group, was adopted by a nonprofit organization here in Chattanooga called The Company Lab and launched in its fourth year of the summer where we were looking at a variety of companies from across North America, across Europe, that were utilizing what we called exponential technologies, big data, virtual reality, 3D printing, wireless networks, software-defined networking, artificial intelligence, that kind of stuff. Technologies where we're seeing a lot of disruptive uh, growth and changes happening in, in um, various industries. Combining that with our gigabit infrastructure here in Chattanooga that is a low latency, uh, a gigabit network spanning over 600 square miles. Um, combining those two things and uh, seeing what we can do. Um, so tell us a little bit about, you had Gig Tank, the uh, presentations about a week ago, I think, right? Last Tuesday. Last Tuesday, that's yeah. right. And so uh, this was, you know, these were graduates basically of a program. Yeah, these were all graduates um, for our startup and accelerator, and as well as what we called a uh, innovation lab. I mean, we had researchers from Oxford University come by and say, hey, what are really innovative, unique ways we can help 3D printers get the best source materials for the projects that they're currently working on? In addition to a local fellowship here with the University of Tennessee Chattanooga, where we had researchers doing some cool stuff with Google Tango, and a variety of other technologies for uh, research and healthcare to then more of the sophisticated startups where everything from Engager, which had already raised millions of dollars creating online interactive videos, to other companies that sold the show that night, uh, like Branch Technologies, which is making 3D printed homes, which got picked up by Fortune and a lot of other top press across not only the country but the world. And then also the People's Choice winner was uh, Paradrop which is gonna be a really interesting online community for developers that are interested in developing applications for smart routers and smart homes in the 21st century. And one of the, one of the graduates was actually an SDN. Now, are they out of Canada? Initially, they came down from Canada and they said, look, we are really inspired not just by the gigabit infrastructure that's been created here in Chattanooga, but by the culture that it took to actually kick this thing off the ground. And by the way, they actually went about thinking about it. And that is uh, in Chattanooga, what was really interesting was when that gigabit infrastructure was built, it was already understood that because they built the smart grid technology on top of it, which helps to reduce power outages, technically it already pays for itself. And so then from there, everything um, else in terms of the economic benefits and the social benefits are just an add-on which is really why Gig Tank was created, is to explore what are some of these, if not immediate gigabit enabled applications today, which we had a few, what are some of the types of technologies that will definitely without question require gigabit infrastructure in the years ahead in order to thrive and scale. And speaking of gigabit infrastructure, uh, what cities have it now and what cities do you think are gonna be rolling this out in the next two to three years? Uh, the way Chattanooga did it was a little bit different through EPV. And there are a lot of great websites out there like ChattanoogaGig.com uh, that help tell that story of how a municipally owned utility board uh, really helped lead the charge 
before um, the rest of the country towards establishing that infrastructure. I think these days you've got both the cable companies like Comcast are announcing the gigabit communities that they'd like to be a part of developing that infrastructure across the country. You've got various Google Fiber communities that are out there. Um, so there's a long list, and I think that it's because at this point there's enough buy-in, there's enough understanding that you know at a real simple level, folks, gigabit infrastructure is on par with the interstate system back during the Eisenhower, back during the um, the um, Eisenhower era. Um, you know, if, if we don't understand that the new interstate system of the 21st century is high-speed internet. Uh, we're not going to be able to remain competitive in a very increasingly uh, interconnected global economy. Well, and it was a really big deal. How long, uh, when, when did Gigabit come to Chattanooga? Because that was a big deal. It was, it was a really pioneering program, right? Yeah, back around 2010 uh, was when it was first launched by EPV. And uh, it was a joint effort of both um, raising funds through bonds as well as some federal support as well. Which is really amazing uh, to think about because, like you said, you know, private companies are are getting involved in this now. Uh, that was a huge push. And so, how do you sell that to people, especially when you're talking about bonds and whatnot? How do you sell the economic incentive of that, other than just saying, "Hey, you guys are going to get great Netflix, you know, connections <laughs> now." Um, well, again, greater economic benefit. Sure, sure. Um, so, just to be clear, I mean, I can't speak on behalf of EPB. I'm just speaking as a enthused Chattanooga and as an individual. Um, you know, on this, but my understanding is that when you look at the cost of power outages across the country, that's roughly about an $80 billion a year cost, nothing uh, that's not substantial. So what Chattanooga realized, and EPB in particular, said, look, we can help reduce these power outages by building the smart grid, which is now developing billions of data points across the 600 square mile infrastructure in order to help reduce uh, the downtime uh, that you would have from what used to be a, a, a predictable of power outages, now through the right uh, predictive analytics, preventive analytics, that's no longer the cost that it used to be. And that's just at a baseline level. But then if you want to talk about exponential technologies moving forward from, I mean, the massive gigabit data files that you're going to have in healthcare to the massive data files you have in, you know, 3D printing, which is an up and coming uh, sector here in Chattanooga. Or if you want to look at even um, my fiance, for instance, uh, works in video production and her employer actually pays for the gig at our home <laughs> because they said, look, you know, we recognize the value. If you're downloading massive, massive video files, time is money and we don't want to pay you to sit around to download these massive files. We want you to have those instantly so that you can then start the editing process. So all those segments are starting to bubble up where it's really becoming obvious as the saying goes, hindsight's 2020, that this is the wave of the future. And in those five years, I mean, what, what have been some of the benefits, what have been some of the, the basic building blocks that have you know, come out of that? Because obviously you guys, Gig Tank is a great example of this, but what are some of the other technologies that you've seen launched that are actually hitting the ground right now uh, that have been enabled with this? Um, well, I would say twofold. One of our very street, uh, key strategic partnerships this summer was US Ignite. And they're a nationwide coalition of technology experts and academics that have showcased what are some of the top gigabit enabled applications that are um, basically addressing that point. And that's a very long list, but if you go to their uh, website, uh, I think it's usignite.org, you can go through a list of these applications. Here in Gig Tank, one of my favorite examples was a company that came homegrown out of Chattanooga, was called Adagio. So these were three guys that uh, all love music. And they said, wouldn't it be cool if two musicians in separate locations could both perform uh, in real time their musical instruments and you didn't have that lag time as a result? Now, you think about the larger implication of that. This summer was really, really interesting for him because here was an example of three guys that developed this technology. And they said, hey, we know now how to uh, make this work. We know how to have a city like Kansas City, which has gigabit infrastructure, with Chattanooga, which has gigabit infrastructure, and have two performers perform at the same time. But where does that add value? 
look at the fact that there are musicians now across the country that are struggling. They're really trying to figure out how can they sync up doing what they love, which is their music, with making a livelihood out of it. Um, and to see these guys through Gig Tank go through that market research process and speak with musicians and said, it would really be amazing if I could provide music lessons to anyone, anywhere, anytime through this gigabit enabled uh, tech. And you could just see the light bulbs going off. And the conversations that resulted from that led them to say, you know what, we want to be in that business of either providing the back end technology or the front end interface so that teachers and students can connect to provide real time music lessons in a fraction of the time and a fraction of the cost. Um going back a little bit to the SDNs and then also you were talking about, you know, predictive analytics and whatnot. I think uh, a lot of this is obviously going towards artificial intelligence and mm. abstracting hardware so that the software actually can control the hardware and it really doesn't matter what happens below that level. Right. So, uh, you know, intelligently routing things and whatnot, but also just dealing with different vendors and OEMs and whatnot and trying to establish standards, uh, which all of that is being worked out right now. Right. And these are things that are sort of in flux right now. But I think there's a strong case for SDNs. Do you see that as sort of the future of networking? Oh, I think it has to be. Um, I mean, I think software defined networking is very difficult to explain. Right. Um, but the way the way I've explained it to people, and I think we've had a lot of conversations, too, about the future of virtualization software and SDN. Is that think of it this way think of it as if, if you're driving a truck from point a to point b two decades ago um, and you didn't have a gps what are the risks that you run into from getting there i mean you, you could have you could have uh traffic issues you could have uh you know potholes you have all kinds of things that can get in the way notwithstanding as it's difficult to read them out well sdn put simply is like having a GPS for that carrier that's trying to take that data from point A to point B. And, and as you start to see, especially in this Internet of Things revolution um, that's happening, routers are going to get overloaded if they don't start to keep up. And what we recognize through some of our startups is that it's actually a lot more efficient for data optimization to have applications in the cloud and have SDN uh, solutions help to optimize the point the data goes from point A to point B for the same reason that we're now, at least most of us, are much more efficient using our GPS on our smartphones to get from where we are to where we want to be. That's a that's a fantastic description, by the way. I'm totally stealing that. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so uh, last question here. Uh, in terms of, you know, how gigabit which is obviously, you know, landlines, right? You're, you're, these are actual fiber optic cables that are going from point to point and distributing this stuff. So in the interaction between that and what's happening in the wireless industry, how do you see that playing out? Um, because obviously gigabit infrastructure is going to roll out across the country and it's gonna, you know, be just sort of like broadband did, right? Where you start with these points and then it radiates out. But wireless is obviously in that mix somehow. So how do you, how do your startups, how are you seeing them deal with the different sort of network issues that you encounter with wireless? Um, I'd be interested in your thoughts on that. My, my general impression is that uh, gigabit Wi-Fi is um, in the years ahead. It's we're, we're getting close and that already um, some of the partners with whom we had a gig team this summer said, yeah, we're already on it and we're closer than we think. So my, my sense is that um, will, will that be a disruptive technology? Yes. Is it going to be just around the corner? Probably not. If there's still going to be a lot of testing or a lot of engineering challenges still that are involved with that. But I think that what, what you have happening then is that as these gigabit enabled communities start to evolve and adapt with investing in that infrastructure, um, that will only then prove the case. And then once gigabit Wi-Fi comes around, you'll then have another layer of adoption. Um, not only throughout the country, but throughout the world. I mean, look at what happened with Africa, for instance, right? Fascinating story of how they almost kind of leapfrogged over an entire wave of telecommunications infrastructure. And now they still have the same end result. So it'll be interesting to see what that looks like. Yeah, well, and I think that, you know, companies like Facebook, of course, are working on ways to connect the entire world and not just do it in a small way, do it in this very, like very high speed, very 
big bandwidth, you know, kind of way and, and not do half measures. And you're right. Africa is a great example of that. Um, you know, uh, but also like you were saying, if the infrastructure on the ground is built out to a certain level, wireless is going to have to come up to that level as well. And obviously right. carriers, I mean, it's one of those things where people say, uh, you never have, you never have enough hard drive space, right? It's like, we never have enough bandwidth really. Um, so all of this is just going to continue. But what I'm thinking right now is that we're going to have this sort of like speed boost on the ground and then wireless is going to have to come up to that. But like you say, it's a huge engineering challenge. And that's one of the things that RCR wireless actually talks about in that regard. So, yeah. uh, so how can people get in touch with gig tank? How can they find out more about you guys? I would recommend that people check out the uh, company lab. Uh, so their website is collab.is or collab.co. Um, they are the parent organization for Gig Tank. And then the Gig Tank website itself is at thegigtank.com, T H E G I G T A N K dot com. And for all the entrepreneurs out there, just give a quick overview of of um, accelerators and their value. Because for whatever reason, there, there is a uh, larger conversation happening within the entrepreneurial community regarding what value do accelerators really offer towards startups. And I would say, uh, briefly, they provide tremendous value in three ways. One, accelerators are able to help entrepreneurs, uh, no matter what their background, what level of experience, get things done with less time and Less cost. We had we had sponsors from, for instance, uh, UTC provided free housing for our teams, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. We also had some of our partners like IBM Software provide up to ten thousand dollars worth of free credits for all of our teams. So in, a, in conjunction with free software and free resources, that can help drive down the cost and reduce some of the risk to actually get off the ground. The second area is through very sophisticated mentor networks. We're able to help teams make sure that. They can leverage a lot of experience and get things done in the right order. I remember at Demo Day, I asked the audience, raise your hand if you ever were a part of a team that did steps three, four, and five before doing steps one, two, and three. And about two thirds of the audience raised their hand. I said, all right, the rest of you guys are just lying because <laughs> we've all been there and startups are no exception. So making sure that startups you know, are incrementally going in the right order, not just getting things done, but getting the right things done is a real value that accelerators offer. And the third is to accelerate strategic relationships. Um, we had a great, great list of partners that you can see on our website at thegigtank.com from Actel Lucent, Schneider Electric, Verizon, UPS, uh, Kenco, which is a local logistics company, a lot of others that have all said, look, you know, we've got certain problems that we're trying to solve, and we'd like to talk with entrepreneurs that are trying to solve those problems and ask how we can help. So by having that alignment and by helping to facilitate those conversations, um, there's always a paradox when you're a startup. Like Steve Blank says, who's a very uh, widely regarded uh, entrepreneur himself, as well as teacher, says, if you're a startup, number uh, one thing you need to do is get out of the building, start talking to people, you know, start shaking hands and so forth. Well, yeah, that's true. The challenge is if you're doing that, nothing's getting done back at the office. So accelerators help solve that problem and say, look, we've gone out and developed a lot of these strategic relationships so you can benefit from them and hit the ground running faster to achieve your goals in a fraction of the time and a fraction of the cost. So whether it's Gig Tank, whether it's another accelerator, highly recommend all entrepreneurs try to find one that's the best fit for them. Excellent. Well, well said. Uh, Alex, thanks so much for your time. Uh, I hey, watched you Demo there. Day. It was fantastic, by the way. Great job on that. Thanks, man. So, oh, uh, great seeing you. yeah, absolutely. Same here. And uh, for all of you, again, thanks for watching Coders. And we will be back next week with another episode. Thanks. All right, guys. Coders is a production of RCR TV News. To reach Victor Agreta Jr. or to suggest a show topic for Coders, you can reach him on Twitter at SuperPixels. For all the latest news on wireless code and the whole world of wireless, check out rcrwireless.com.